CBS News in Washington. This is the CBS News Night Watch. This morning, the question is why All-American basketball star Len Bias, headed for the Boston Celtics, was struck down by an apparent heart attack. When I saw him, uh, he seemed totally healthy. He was enthusiastic. He's very happy about being a part of uh, uh, the Celtics organization. Lenny Bias, during his lifetime, was an outstanding individual who cared about people, and uh, I don't believe that's ever going to be tarnished. This was certainly one of the best weeks in Lynn Bias's young life. Imagine an All-American basketball star. Imagine having the current NBA champions, the Boston Celtics, make you their number one pick in the college draft. That is the stuff of dream for a 22-year-old, and that is what happened to Lynn Bias. But the dream ends there. Lynn Bias died Thursday morning of what doctors believe was a heart attack. To describe this death as shocking only begins to scratch the surface. There is the grief of a young man cut down in his prime, a young man whose dream of playing with the Celtics was about to come true. And then there are the troubling questions about drugs. What part, if any, did they play in the death of Len Bias? Stay tuned as we attempt to put some perspective on this man's life and his death. death of college basketball star Lynn Bias Thursday has left a lot of people baffled. Along with the grief, there is the mystery of how an athlete so young and fit died the way he did. CBS News correspondent Bernard Goldberg has our report. When you're 22, an All-American college basketball player and apparently in top physical condition, you're not supposed to die of a heart attack. There was no chest pain, nothing that would indicate something uh, bad was about to happen. A lot of people thought Lynn Bias was the best college basketball player in America. The Boston Celtics select Lynn Bias at the University of Maryland. Just two days ago, he was a star of the NBA college draft. I'm glad and thankful to be here. Uh, this is a great team, and I'm looking forward to playing here. This morning, on campus, Len Bias collapsed. It was sudden. About two hours later, he was dead. Even though doctors believe he died of a heart attack, they are investigating further. Late today, reporters asked if he was using cocaine. There has never been in any indication of anybody involved in the men's basketball team that have been involved with drugs. Len Bias is dead at 22. Two days ago, he was all smiles. Two days ago, his whole life was ahead of him. Bernard Goldberg, CBS News, New York. The death of Len Bias is especially hard for those who knew him well. Among them, the athletic director of the University of Maryland, Dick Dull. CBS News reporter Hampton Pearson spoke with Dull Thursday on the university campus. We were just talking, and you said you can remember the day that Len Bias signed and agreed to come to the University of Maryland. What are, what are your thoughts about that? What do you remember most about that period of time? Oh, I remember how excited we were because he was such an outstanding basketball player. And, and um, as we got to know him, we found out that not only was he outstanding on the basketball court, but he was outstanding off of it, too. He was a fine young man and, and was dedicated to getting his degree. and. He always had a big smile on his face. He just was a pleasure to be around. Did he have that sort of effect on other people, too, in this, as they came in contact with him? Uh, absolutely. You couldn't uh, walk through this building and look at Lenny and have him smile at you without him lighting your face up as well. And He had great leadership potential. and The players revered him. He, he was like a god here, not only because of his ability to play basketball, but his ability as a leader. And, they're just people are just stunned today that he's gone. What did he mean to the University of Maryland, not only the basketball program, but really the whole athletic program? Well, he was, uh, first of all, a goodwill ambassador for us. Um, like it or not, basketball and sports are very visible in our society, and Lenny was a great spokesman and a great representative of the University of Maryland. He made us proud in, in that connection. Uh, from a financial standpoint, uh, in 1981, we didn't play in the NCAA tournament uh, the last four years we have. And I have to believe that most of that is credited to, to Lenny Bias. How did he, as a person, handle all the things that really we've been just talking about? This sense of a larger-than-life presence 
real or imagined, he still had to live it, he had to deal with it. Um, people also, the expectations of him, because he was so visible and in one area uh, so good at what he did, how did he deal with it as a person, as a student walking this campus? He handled it very well. Um, he would be the kind of person that would go into an environment and never mention that he was Lenny Bias, and never mention that he was a basketball player. Obviously, people probably knew that because of his physical stature. But he, his head never got uh, out of proportion uh, to his personality. Uh, he handled it well. He was modest. I never saw him turn down a young man for an autograph. He did all kinds of public benefits for us, and uh, he looked at that as part of his responsibility as a public figure. Uh, he was happy to do it because people, uh, he realized, expected him to do it. What about the pressure as the draft do, drew near? Um, everyone telling him he's going to be a millionaire any day now, um, offers of out there of one kind or another. Uh, how was that wearing on? Um, from my vantage point, uh, the only he was handling it very well. Um, I think he grew up uh, loving the Boston Celtics. I saw him in this building just three weeks ago, and he told me that he was finishing his degree. That was one of his priorities, and the other was he was praying that the Boston Celtics, who picked second, would pick him. He wanted to uh, play with the Celtics. He knew Mr. Arbach because he's lived here in Washington for quite some time. Um, that's the kind of pressure. He was worried that maybe he wouldn't go to the Celtics, but he knew a long time ago that he was going to be a millionaire. Uh, that was obvious from probably his junior year because of the character of his, uh, of his play. Now, until we get a complete coroner's report, there are going to be rumors of drugs or drug involvement. We're already hearing this within hours now that uh, traces of cocaine found in his system, perhaps cocaine at a party that he and some other people were at um, last night, perhaps. Your own thoughts on that? That would surprise me uh, completely. I'd never discount it, though, because in today's world, you never know. Uh, Lenny Bias never indicated any kind of propensity towards drug abuse or alcohol abuse. As I said, we have a drug testing program. Lenny's been through it. There's never been any detection of any kind of foreign substances in his body. That would be a shock, and that would probably double the tragedy that, that we have today. But regardless of what the cause, it's not going to bring him back. If it is the cause, I think young men who have uh, had him as a role model and as a hero in this nation better take a good look about experimenting with drugs. Once we get a final result that everyone hopefully can live with as to what the exact cause of death was, what do you think Lynn Bias will be remembered most for here at the University of Maryland? Um, those people that didn't know him, I think, will probably remember him as just one of the most outstanding basketball players they've ever had the privilege to see. Those people like Lefty Drizel and myself and the staff and his teammates are going to remember him as part of the family. We grieve not because we're not going to be able to play basketball, watch him play basketball anymore. We grieve today because we know that a family member is gone from us. If there turns out to be a drug connection, to what degree would that tarnish his memory? Oh, I think in some circumstances, obviously, people would uh, would formulate a differing conclusion about the worth of Lenny Bias, and that'd be unfortunate. Regardless of what might have caused his death, Lenny Bias during his lifetime was an outstanding individual who cared about people, and uh, I don't believe that's ever going to be tarnished. Okay. Thank you for talking to us. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. When we come back, we'll talk with Casey Jones, the head coach of the Boston Celtics. The Celtics had just made Lynn Bias their number one draft choice. Stay with us. We continue. It's still ahead on night watch. Oscar winning actors the shock of Lynn Bias' death is also being contact. felt in Boston, Casey where the world champion Boston Celtics had just picked him as the number one choice in the NBA draft. With us from Boston, Celtics coach Casey Jones. Thank you, Casey, for joining us on a day that's obviously very sad for you. Tell us about Lynn Bias that you knew and what the loss means to you and to the Celtics. Lynn Bias that I knew, um, I saw him last year at, uh, at rookie camp, and uh, he worked here uh, with the kids uh, as we went through our uh, draft list. And then again, uh, I saw him uh, during the course of the uh, Houston Rockets uh, series and spent a couple of days with them. Uh, he came to practice, uh, 
we saw him uh, uh, at, the, at the ball games, and uh, I'd sit in the office with Red Auerbach, uh, with Jan Volk, and we said, we, we talked, and we were m very much impressed uh, with uh, Lynn. Uh, he came across very well. He was, you know, he, 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 very enthusiastic, a very bright youngster. Uh, 22 years old, uh, uh, just a great body, and uh, but he was just very happy to be a part of uh, the Boston Celtics. I saw him again after the draft. Uh, we drafted him. Uh, he flew up from New York, and uh, again, but very much impressed with this uh, very uh, exceptional young man, and uh, and all my uh, my thoughts at, the, at this point just go to his family. And they uh, must be devastation, and uh, and it's the same feeling that uh, that we've had in the office. But uh, I know the family is is very much uh, devastated by uh, by the loss of their son. What does the loss mean to the Celtics as a basketball team? Where did he fit in? Well, uh, I think uh, the family feels a loss much more than than, than our needs. Of course, uh, they our do. Needs are so, Everybody so else does. Yes. Uh, but he was someone that uh, Larry Bird very much admired and, uh, and said if he came to uh, the Celtics, then, uh, then he'd show up at, at, the, uh, at the training camp, uh, at, at rookie camp. And that's, this is Larry Bird talking. Uh, which indicates to me, and uh, I've seen the tapes of uh, Lynn Bias uh, with the Red R back and Jan Volk, he had such a determination to succeed and he showed that in his hustle and scrap along with his talent for driving to the basket, for uh, putting the ball in from the outside. Uh, a most impressive youngster on the court and much more uh, off the court. He, he uh, happened to be a very, very uh, impressive youngster amongst the, uh, the campers at Red Auerbach's camp last year. And he just sit and, and talk with them and the kids just and he knew how to come across to them. They asked them, they asked Lynn, how, uh, what size shoe do you wear? And Lynn would say, well, uh, what size shoe do you wear? But he had this kind of a communication that uh, the kids loved. But he knew how to deal with uh, youngsters. He knew how to, how to deal with, uh, and from that point, uh, very easily with, with, uh, uh, with older people. Did he seem totally healthy when you saw him right after the draft? When I saw him, uh, he seemed totally healthy. He was enthusiastic. He was very happy about being a part of uh, uh, the Celtic organization. And uh, we had some words here and there. Uh, he wanted to play this summer in a league. I said, well, it's best you talk with Jan Volk before you uh, decide to do something like that. And uh, he said, well, that's fine. And, but, and I suggested something, something that he could work on. Uh, and well, we had this kind of conversation, but I felt and uh, of course, even though Red, uh, Red Arbeck, uh had a, diff a very difficult day uh, trying to uh, answer all the questions that, they, that came about. And, and Red was very close to uh, Lynn Bias, and he formed a, quite a relationship uh, in, the, in the past two years. Uh, but Red did the job of getting through it. Red uh, may seem like the hard, uh, from the outside, a very hard person, but uh, inside, the man is a uh, very, very, uh, open and sensitive to other people and he felt very close to a Lynn Bias. Uh, but uh, hey, what can you say? Uh, this is a, this youngster was just so vibrant and enthusiastic and uh, he had a uh, most impressive with, uh, with the way he came across to us. Yeah. Any, any indication that anyone has communicated to you in this tragedy as to what happened to him and what caused the death? From uh, the information that I've gotten uh, is that uh, it was a heart attack uh, and a heart failure, and that's, uh, that's about as far as I can get with it. No indication from anybody. There's a report on the local news here about traces of cocaine, anything. You'd never aware of anything like that. I was never aware of that, and uh, I heard that mentioned, but then uh, uh, my thoughts are really with his family because his family is, uh, they've lost their son. Yeah.
22-year-old uh, 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 Lynn Bias is not with us anymore, and his family must be going through a, a, obviously a very, very difficult time uh, at the loss. And so are ours. Um, a man whose life was ahead of him, and to be a part of the Boston Celtics, along with graduating from the University of Maryland, with two of his dreams. Um, that he had and I know it's a loss most of all to the family who watched him grow up and certainly to those like you and Red who wanted to share his future so we thank you on a tough day taking this time to join us thank you Casey thank you